for what we came here today to see is the member activity tracking for the Modern Club. So to start off, uh, a lot of people on the line, you might have registered for this and thought, you know, interested in activity tracking, but not sure exactly what they're talking about. What this is, is it's going to let your members sign themselves into specific areas of the club. Um, they could be using anything from a member card to a member number that is entered in via a keypad. Or it could be something as simple as a mobile app on their phone using a beacon technology. And what that's going to allow you to do is track which parts of the club your members are using most or the least. From here, there is integration that's going to tie into the point of sale system. So what that's going to allow you to do is add automatic charges by member rule or member status. So what we mean by that is if I am a platinum member, I come to the gym, I grab a towel, I'm not going to pay for that or I walk in, I'm not going to pay for that visit. If I'm a social member, I might need to pay for that. The system's going to know that I'm a social member and charge me accordingly. And then from there, if I do decide that, hey, I am going to take two towels or whatever it might be, I then have the ability to pop how many towels I'm going to have and the charge will flow back to my account. So how can it help? Obviously, predicting staffing needs uh, to help with your capital planning, being able to see how busy certain areas are with the amount of members that are in there. Help with your member retention, knowing which members are actually coming into the club and which members are not coming into the club. Maybe following up with those members that are not using the different facilities to find out why or just promote that that facility is there for them. And then also just from a security perspective, being able to monitor the check-in for any uh, specific area to know what's going on. So from here, I am going to pass control over to Rob Lamana, who will then guide us through the activity tracking webinar. Thank you very much, Scott. So what I wanted to do was to take us through the sort of flavors in which activity tracking can be implemented in the various areas of your club. So as Scott mentioned, um, we support a variety of different methods of members checking themselves in from entering their own member number um, to scanning a member card or even just walking by a particular point of egress, ingress with a mobile app which would connect with the beacon and then check them in. Uh, in the self-check-in scenario that we're looking at here in, in Fitness Center, uh, a member can simply go in and enter their member number, so I'll enter mine. This is touch screen compatible and it'll now prompt me in the Fitness Center to say, which area of the fitness center am I actually going to? Which facility am I going to be using on this particular day? So you have one point of entry where they're checking in, but there are multiple different areas to which they can go once they've checked in. And if you want to track more granularly what people are doing when they're checking into the fitness center, the ability to set up different facilities within it gives you that ability to track where exactly they went on a day. And I can select multiple. I'm going to the pool and I'm going to the court. In this case, I'm checking two fitness studios. So this particular... Um, this particular check-in allows me to uh, perform what's known as a family check-in. So when I hit the, the option to check-in, it's going to say, okay, Robert, you're checked in, um, but your spouse, Danielle McConnell, uh, has not checked in. Is she with you? Do you want to check her in? So instead of having to do two separate check-ins, as one person, I can check in on behalf of myself, my spouse, my children, and even any guests that I'm bringing with me. So as Scott pointed out, there is some point of sale integration, which will automatically apply charges to people. And at this point, if you want to track the number of guests that are coming in and potentially charge for those guests, um, you have the ability for them to specify a number of guests. And again, to Scott's point, the ability to provide ad hoc charges, so something like a towel fee. So um, if I'm charging everybody for a towel, so in this case, it's not exactly like Scott's uh, scenario, but you could do it by member uh, status or type, but you could also say just generally, if you want to get a towel, there's an additional cost. And when I click on, I'm going to get one towel um, that will tabulate as part of the amount that's going to be charged to me. When I touch done or click on done, it's going to prompt me with a message indicating that there's going to be uh, a charge applied to my account. In this case, $36.50 for the two guests and the one towel. Am I sure I want to continue upon clicking OK? That's going to send a charge and shit over to the point of sale and check me in. And you can see it says I'm successfully checked in. And at that point, the screen refreshes back to um, the particular uh, type of member entry screen for that area. So that's sort of one um, aspect of the, the check-in where we're allowing people to use their member number and check in automatically. Um, but we have some different flavors. Like I said, we support card swiping as well. So I'm going to switch over to my pool. It's going to be a different flavor where I'm actually using an RFID card to tap in. And you'll hear the beep, hopefully through the phone when I when I complete that. Again, I'm using this all off one computer. Typically, you would have multiple workstations um, 
that would be in play, and each workstation would be set up to handle it differently. So you can see my pool activity area, and it says, please tap your member card to check in. And when I tap the member card on my reader, it makes a beep and sets me in automatically. So I'll check in and get a refresh to the next, the next person can come up and walk up and tap their card. So just another way for people to um, check in to a particular area without um, having to key their member number in or asking them to do it manually. So again, I'll, I'll tap my card and that'll automatically check, my tap will check me in. The option to check in my family as well because that's an option that I made available. Um, but as soon as the check-in goes, there's a timeout that'll pass, um, and that will restore the screen back to the tap tap your card to check in. So the third flavor that I can show you over the webinar is actually the um, manual check-in. So as a as a club, if I don't want people to self do self check-in, I have the ability to set it up such that um, someone at the club can manually check in. Switch over to that. I'll bring it back up. You should be seeing this monitoring area, which I'll get to in a minute. But um, from I can set the area, and I can say, okay, now I'm at club front desk. Oh, Mr. Taylor, you've shown up. What's your member number? Do another look up. That one didn't work. We'll check in, Mr. Hagopian, and then it'll automatically bring me in and say a welcome message to Bache to say welcome to the club. So from this monitoring screen, this can be used anywhere um, throughout the club. So this is a manual check-in I'm performing, but from a monitoring perspective, you can view any of the areas of the club where there have been check-ins. So you can see, I can see the history. So this can be applied for anyone at the club. It, the person doesn't have to be manning a front desk where they're actually taking check-ins. They just want to be able to see who's coming in, when they came in, where they went, um, and any more details they want to see on that particular member or check-in. Um, you can just click through it. As people check in, they would float to the top of this list and they would they would be highlighted in the uh, view more details section, um, but as time passes, they would fall off and other people would, would rise to the top of that list. Um, you can also check through the history. So if I want to see the history of the fitness center um, for the entire week, uh, I can run that query and it'll bring up a list of all the check-ins. And again, I can see more info on any of those check-ins that came in as what time they checked in, what facility they went to, um, and, and who they were and any more details in terms of their member status. So, so far we've covered how members check in, how you can check members in. Um, the next stage of, of this process is really um, running reports on anybody that has checked in. So I can run this activity report um, and there are a whole host of parameters that can be set on it. So you can say, I want it as a detailed check-in report or do I want it as a summary or do I want any decline? So anybody whose member number didn't work or their member card didn't work um, that decline, those declines will be tracked within there as well. Date range, obviously. What check-in time? So do I want to see anybody that checked in early morning, afternoon, evening, all day? Up to you. And then by what check-in method? So how are they checked in? All methods or only those that were manual, um, that were performed by the club staff? Beyond that, you can choose which activity. So if you're only concerned with, I've got three different um, activity types set up, my club sort of general check-in, my fitness area, as well as my pool. Um, do I want to know where they checked in from or am I indifferent and I want to see all of the check-ins? Last thing is selecting members. So you have the option to select all members and then filter by particular member statuses. Um, or alternatively, you can say I only want specific members and then you can comprise, uh, compose a list of members by entering member numbers or for instance, using the lookup, which will bring up your full member list. And from there, you can say anybody that matches last name, Taylor, I can have Scott Taylor in there and then I can run the report based on those people. When I generate the report, I can say generate on new page, so it'll open it up in a full screen view here. Um, I can see all the check-ins that took place during that time frame, and there weren't any between 856 and 856. However, if I modify those parameters and just say give me all the time, and again, I generate that on a new page. All of the check-ins that took place in club, fitness, um, and pool if there were any for all of the members that I included in my list. So again, I had a pretty short list of members, myself, uh, Scott Taylor, and Bache Azopian, but it allows you to produce those reports to see how many people checked in. That's pretty much it for uh, coverage on the product in terms of what it can do. Um, like I said, you can set, like Scott said, POS integration, 
very key. Um, if you're allowing people to charge for guests and for ad hoc things like towels, as well as for members, if members don't have access to a particular area without paying an additional fee, you can set all that up on behalf of them. Multiple different types of check-ins. Um, so the ability for members to self-check-in either by member number, member card, or beacon. Um, the ability for members to check in their entire family in one fell swoop as opposed to having doing separate check-ins. And we'll prompt that based on the billing relationships you have set up within um, the member file. And, and lastly, the ability to look at, to monitor who's coming into the club from anywhere in the club for all areas of the club centrally. So if you're concerned about when a member arrives, you can be notified automatically by viewing the monitoring screen. So with that, I'll hand it over to our question and answer period. And let's see what questions we've received through the chat, Trevor. We have a few questions come in. One from Jessica is asking, if a member checks in a guest, will it also automatically redeem guest packages that it is the member has already purchased for guests? Uh, so we're doing a, so they're purchasing, a, I guess, a prepaid in terms of guest passes. Um, I don't think there's any integration to that at present, but that's a great suggestion for future in terms of um, redeeming a prepaid item. It may be possible, we'd have to look into this for more detail to see if we set it up as a redeem item on the prepaid um, as a fee, uh, but that's something we'd have to check into as far as uh, either redeeming as a prepaid service or um, selling the replacement item at that time. Another one that also from Jessica, which I think is maybe one that many other people have, is uh, is there a checkout option? And uh, if not, when does the person attendance at that uh, facility kind of expire for? So what you can do, is there is no checkout. Um, what, what we do is we set a timeout. So we can say, for instance, if a person is, if you're using beacons and a person walks by a beacon and then a minute and a half later walks by that same beacon, is it going to check them as twice? And no, you can set a gap between um, when check-ins are going to be reported. So if you can set it up, you know, that it's a half hour or an hour or something reasonable where you don't really care if a person encounters that beacon again because they um, they really haven't left. They're just walking by a point that's in contact with it. You can set a timeout that says, don't take new check-ins within this time interval for a given person. Uh, so if I had checked in by walking by the, the front desk and encountered the beacon, it would check me in. But if I did that again within that time interval you set, it would not recheck the event. Um, we have a question from Daily Arnett. Uh, can a member check in a guest who is unlisted? For example, an anonymous plus one. Yes. And that's basically what I was showing there. You're just adding the number of guests that you're bringing in. You're not really identifying who they are. Um, you're just saying, I'm bringing two guests, and then we're applying the appropriate fees based on that guest or those guests being added. Uh, one from Laura McLaughlin. What devices do clubs typically use for a member check-in? Is it tablet or maybe touchscreen PC? Uh, I would I would say touchscreen PC is probably the touchscreen monitor is probably the best option. Um, we can bring up a keyboard. Uh, beyond that, we're talking about different RFID readers and or beacons. We can supply some suggestions on what type should be used. But typically, we would say touchscreen monitor to run the application. <laughs> We have another one here. Uh, what happens if a member is suspended? How will they be alerted to avoid embarrassment? Um, I I don't think we have anything in place right now that limits my member status, but that is something that is on the death plan for fast follow. But you will have the ability to, in the near future, uh, restrict who can check in to a particular area or all areas for that matter, um, based off of the member status. Uh, so we'll have the ability to restrict those people uh, purely based off their their statuses or their people and server, whatever method you want to use. We have one comment from Stephanie. Do you know where you can find more information about getting beacons? And do members simply need to activate their Bluetooth on their devices, or is there anything else they need, need to do? Um, when you install the app, it will. So it what will need to happen is you need to be running our our member app. Uh, the Clubless Line mobile app will need to be running. Uh, when it's installed, it will request all the permissions necessary from the user. I believe it is uh, location services and Bluetooth that need to be okay. I think we also ask for the control of brightness for the member card if you're using a scanner for the member card on the mobile app. Um, but we will prompt the user at that time uh, to allow all the permissions necessary to allow for the beacon interaction. Um, in 
terms of getting information on beacons, uh, we can provide you with uh, devices we tested on uh, as far as beacons are concerned, but uh, you're always open to, as long as we can connect us to our, our beacon solution, any device could be fine. One from Brittany, uh, how does the program alert staff checking in members of their status? So for example, will a staff member be notified if it's a full fitness member versus a social member only? Um, no particular notification, but through the monitoring area. So if I were to launch my monitoring screen for a club um, and we look at the look at the history, and I'll just bring up the feed. So there's no new activity, but um, if I bring up the feed for Fitness Center because I've got some data in there just from moments ago, um, and we generate, you can see on a particular member. So if I were to check someone in, it would show what status they belong to. Um, but again, and always through the more info, you can find out active member in a more clear, concise format. It's also displayed within the um, within the membership type column here in this monitoring screen. But when the, when the person came up, so when we had activity previously, when I was doing uh, manual check-ins through clubs, so if I just flip over to the club, process, you can see here what member status the, the member is right in that, that record that we have for the check-in. And Scott, if uh, people want to get more information, um, what should they do? So there's a couple things. You can contact your local representative um, if you're unsure of who that is. You can always go to jonasclub.com and contact us through there or simply send an email to sales at jonasclub.com and then that will be routed to your appropriate representative who can get back to you with more information on pricing and so on.